everybody, good evening. My name is Graham. I'm Irish, yeah. Thank you, someone else is Irish too. Uh, but I've got something else that I would like to get out of the way straight off the bat. <clears throat> I don't care for walking down town. Crazy auto cars gonna mow me down. I look at all the people like cows in a herd. Cause I like birds. Yeah, I do. I, I, love, I love nature. When I was young, my favorite toys were my plastic early learning center animals. I would, um, I would create a world where Mr. and Mrs. Han Dinosaur would fight battles against tigers and, and bears. I, I had a wild imagination, literally. But my favorites, they were birds. Now, I, I'm not saying that everybody who goes bird watching is a, a loner, but I didn't have a lot of confidence as a kid. I prefer to hide away up my own tree as far away from people as I could. I don't stand in line at the store. The mean little people are such a bore. But it's okay if you act like a turd, cause I like birds. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch. Come on! If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. If you're small and on a search, I've got a feeder for you to perch on. So guys, who agrees with me? Ah, mic stands are difficult. And, and even better, birds are awesome. I, I mean, thank you. I mean, they, they really are. First of all, these are creatures that can fly. That's cool. <laughs> Number two, they are directly descended from dinosaurs. That is super cool. Yeah? And number three, they can poop in your head and you can do nothing about it. <laughs> so, so what I want to talk to you about tonight is spirit birds. Do you know what I mean? These are, these are birds that share your, your personality traits or your character traits. And, and you can tell a lot about a man by the bird that he picks. And I didn't mean birds as in women there because I would, you, you can't pick women. That's weird and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> Let me give you an example, okay? Joel here, I think his spirit bird is a robin. Tweet! Because he is very enthusiastic about everything. Whereas Ash is less enthusiastic. A, yeah, I know. A bit more like, um, like a bored duck. <laughs> hey! I'm sorry, it's, it's for comparison, please just go with it. Quack. So as you can see, <laughs> thanks. As you can see, I've asked my backing vocalist to make the cabaret a little bit more educational for you by making some, some of the calls of some of the birds that I'm going to talk to you about tonight. I guess it's my version of live tweeting. It's all right. Honestly, I, I didn't know what that, what that was until like a week ago. Uh, let, let me give you another example. What was that? Pigeon. <laughs> that, that wasn't a pigeon. It, it got hit by a car. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, well, to find out somebody's spirit bird, you only need two things. 
to be a good judge of character, which I am, and to know a lot about birds, which I do. <laughs> I am, um, mm, mm -hmm, it's true. I, uh, I used to read bird magazines. I had posters of birds all up on my wall. And my dad, he would take me out and, and we'd look at birds through binoculars and, and I could have put that better again, couldn't I? <laughs> okay, well, but, but the strange thing is, yeah, that one takes a few seconds, it's okay. Um, <laughs> the strange thing is, uh, despite all this knowledge, I didn't know what bird I was myself. I mean, you guys are easy. I, I can see some pigeons there. I can see some robins and, to be honest, quite a lot of cocks. But, <laughs> but, <ooh. laughs> take that one out of the next cabaret. <laughs> but, um, but what I thought I was when I was young was a kestrel. Yeah, as a sleek, smooth falcon, a predator. I, I used to run around in the playground at lunch times, leaping into the air. There was nothing more exciting for young Graham than trying to fly. <laughs> the problem was that kestrels are cool. I am not cool. To be honest, I was something more like a wren, a very little bird that just dreams of being something much bigger. There was a boy, a very strange and awkward boy. They say he tried to be a bird. What a nerd, flying high and free. A little shy and sad of eye, but a bird man was he. Then one day, one magic day, she flew my way. And while we spoke of many things, feathers and wings, this she said to me. The greatest thing which I can sing is that to fly. You need to spread your wings If I can see it Then I can be it If I just believe it There's nothing to it I believe I can fly I believe I can touch the sky I think about it every night and day Spread my wings and fly away Oh, I believe I can soar See me running through that open door I believe I can fly, I can fly. Oh yeah I can fly. I'm gonna do it, yeah I can fly. If I just spread my Can I just say, Birdman, that was my title before Michael Keaton came and took it away. <laughs> Can take his Oscars, whatever he wants, that was me. <laughs> but okay, so that was a nice dream to have as a kid. But when I grew up, I realized that my feet were safer standing on solid ground. I, uh, I went to university and I thought there that I would be some sort of owl, which translated out of Irish is owl. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a tough language to learn. <laughs> but, um, but owls are wise, they're calm and they're confident and, and I was none of those things. I unsurprisingly studied biology, which is the science of the indecisive, I think. <laughs> uh, now research itself isn't glamorous, it's not. It's honestly a lot of prodding, a lot of swabbing and God help me, a lot of mathematics. But I managed to do quite well. And I learned the three things necessary to become a scientist. Optimism. My glass is half full. Practicality. I do not know the volume of your glass, but can smell alcohol. And the ability to ask silly questions. Lads, who's round, is it? No, surprisingly enough, the ability to ask silly questions is actually the most important. I mean, if you're going to study birds like shags, 
Yeah, the childish ones just laughed. <laughs> Wait for it. Or, or blue-footed boobies. Then you're going to need to like asking some silly questions. Ah! Oh, and if any gentleman wondered what a booby sounds like, that is, that is it. <laughs> Joel knows a lot about boobies. <laughs> Unlike me, though, I, I didn't... <laughs> I don't know what his face is now. Uh, I, I didn't get to study boobies. No boobies for Graham. No, no, no. <sighs> Instead, get ready, this is serious. I, I wrote a dissertation on tits. It's honestly not a joke. Um, I was known as... Tit boy. Tit man. The great tit. And that was just by my friends. Now, for any of you that don't know, tits are actually small birds, very common in Britain. And, and I would go about walking, armed only with a tape recorder and a dead bird with a stick up its butt. Seriously, again, the bird in question was called Lucian. Uh, he was a stuffed sparrowhawk, a predator, which I used to scare away tits. <sighs> Horrible metaphor for my life. <laughs> now, Lucian and I, we would, we would talk together. We would chat, you know, in, in some way, because he was the only person there. But again, all I imagined him saying was him making crude jokes about what tits tasted like. But the point is, it's another slow burner, but the point is, <laughs> seriously, that I, I actually envied him because this was a bird who, when he was very young, looked around his cozy nest and thought, hmm, I'm going to jump and leapt into a void without knowing if he was going to fly or if he was going to fall. I couldn't do that, not anymore. As I grew up, I stopped being able to take risks because I wasn't confident enough that I wouldn't fail. I think we all know what that feels like to be so high up one day and come crashing back down the next. And sometimes all you want is a wise old bird like Lucian to tell you, it's just not that big of a deal. I know that you think it's a really big deal, but like I find out, it's just nothing at all. I'd like you to say, no, it's not a big deal. And understand that it's nothing at all. But I get over the bricks, though sometimes I stumble and fall. And I get over the bricks, though sometimes I stumble and fall. You just won't admit that it's all in your hands, so I have to try hard to make you understand that all you can say is it's part of the deal. And I never asked you to understand why I keep to myself in the crush of the crowd, but all you can say is you can't of a deal.
still stumble and fall. An emotional drink of water. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Lucian wasn't my spirit bird. I, I thought he might be, but to be honest, he was too brave. So I tried to get over my fear. I, um, I went traveling a lot. I, I wanted to have the spirit of an albatross, even though I felt more like an oversized seagull. Mine, 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 mine. I went anywhere that was exciting. Anywhere that was different, I tried to find myself. I didn't. But my CV looked amazing. I, um, I taught English in India. Ooh. Yeah, completely off your own path. I, um, I saved animals in Kenya. Ah. And I picked potatoes in France. That's <laughs> funny, because you're Irish. So it, it's all very well to, to fly away, but it's very easy in these situations to feel like a fish out of water. Or um, a bird analogy, um, like a tit out of... Bush. Tree. Bra. Bra. Yes, I, I actually did feel like a tit out of bra when I was in Finland. Um, let me explain. I, I accidentally ended up on a hippie commune. Just go with it. Um, <laughs> seriously. I, um, I was picked up in the middle of nowhere by a balding man from Wolverhampton who, uh, who proudly announced in his strong, brummy accent, We will be having a sauna this evening to celebrate. Joel needs to take Birmingham off his CV, apparently. <laughs> so saunas, saunas, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was worried about the dress code. Or, or the undress code, I guess. So like all good, awkward Irishmen, I, I slipped on a pair of swimming trunks underneath my trousers and uh, went downstairs to meet my fate. I cut to the changing room with Baldy Wolverhampton, and, um, uh, and I'm about to pop the awkward question when suddenly all his clothes are on the floor. Oh, I... Uh, <laughs> I felt like my spirit bird was suddenly a canary or, or a budgie. I was trapped in a cage with only a naked man from Birmingham for company. I must have let out a little chirp of surprise because he just turned round, looked at me coolly and said, Graham, take up your shirt real <laughs> slow. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. Graham, take up your shoes. The socks and the sandals? I am getting so hot, I want to take my clothes off. Graham, take off your vest. Yes, yes, yes. But can I leave my hat on? You can leave your hat on. Okay, I'll leave my hat on. Okay, so I was dripping with sweat. You were in a sauna. Nervous sweat. Ew, were you naked? Yes, I, I tried not to draw attention to myself, but, but someone called me over and said, put some wood on the fire, turn up the heat. This song is getting hot. You took off all your clothes. Come here, sit by me. This song is weird, the mental image is disturbing. Raise your arms in the air. Oh God, this is weird. I'm very white, but you know, I, I actually kind of like this. <laughs> Do a little dance, make a little love, live a little bit. Come on, get down tonight. All the birds are talking. Singing their songs to me <laughs> They say my love is wrong mm -hmm. But they don't know what love is No, no, they don't know what love is Well, oh, they don't know what love is They don't know what love is No, no, you don't have to pity me, girl You know You give me reason to live, you give me reason to live, you give me reason to live, you give me reason to live. 
<coughs> Excuse me. That wasn't planned. <coughs> okay, so it didn't quite get that weird, but, but obviously the first time I was in the sauna, it got so hot that I, I started having hallucinations. <laughs> The surprising thing was, though, that the next few times I did it, I felt quite comfortable. I was confident in my own skin for once without my feathers. Now, that lasted just the time it took me to get home. And then my spirit bird was suddenly a plucked chicken. <laughs> and I put my clothes back on. Biggest cheer of the night. Um, now, a chicken might seem like an odd choice for a spirit bird, but... Well, there was one time I was dissecting a chicken egg in a lab. Uh, and, and inside this egg, there was a tiny, tiny red dot. It was a chicken, or what would have been a chicken if I hadn't broken in. But, but at this point, the bird was, was blissfully unaware of what was going on. So I zoomed in uh, with the microscope, and I saw a, a, a blood vein, a blood vessel, with red blood cells tumbling past one another like traffic on a busy street, and it was weird and surprising, but suddenly, for the first time in my life, in a bird that would never breathe or walk or fly, I felt like I had seen real life for the first time. It was strange. It was like flying too close to the sun, beautiful but dangerous, and, and I wanted to do something. I wanted to run. I wanted to leap. I wanted to fly, to live, and then I realized what bird I was. I knew, it's obvious, my friends are right. I am just a bearded tit. I mean, we're all a bit of a tit, if you think about it. We're all scared of falling, and, and I think I'm more scared than most people. But if we let it get in the way, then we'll never feel the rush of flying, what it is to tell someone you love them, what it is to stand up and do a cabaret about birds. <laughs> so... This, I'm Graham, and this is my call. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you feel like sitting down still in your chairs, what I say to that is, fuck it. Tonight we fly over the houses, the streets and the trees, over the dogs down below. They'll bark at our shadows as we float by on the breeze. Tonight we fly over the chimney tops, skylights and slates, looking into all your lives and wondering why happiness is so hard to find. Tonight we fly over the And those that we now know And those who we've yet to meet And when we die Oh, will we be that disappointed or sad? If heaven doesn't exist, what will we have missed? This life is the best we've ever 